Hello, on today's episode of What's on My Workbench, I'm gonna be working on two belts. One you've seen before, it's the Western. The other one I refer to as the Cindy belt. And the reason why I call it Cindy belt is the first person I made a belt like this for was my sister-in-law, Cindy. So uh, I'm gonna make them in similar color style, so they'll go together, but they're totally different design styles. So I'm gonna let you follow along on that. I'm gonna spend uh, not a whole lot of time talking about the Western belt, you'll see me working on that, but I'm gonna mainly focus on how I make the Cindy belt. So I hope you enjoy following along here in my busy little shop. I should probably say messy little shop. I really gotta get it cleaned up. I get so focused on projects and then you know how it goes, the workbench gets cluttered. Hope you enjoy following along. Okay, to get started, I fill out a order for each belt so i have it in front of me and i have less of a chance of making mistakes i did say less of a chance so this belt is going to be made in golden brown with black stitching a stainless steel buckle uh, the first one's going to be made in the cindy style it's a 33 inch belt the next one is golden brown inch and a half or a 40 inch finished belt black stitching black spot stainless steel in the Western. The next thing I need to do is I get out my uh, leather that I'm gonna use and the uh, Cindy belt, it says it's an inch and a half wide. The That's the widest point and you'll see what I mean by that. So I get out my leather. This is gonna be the leather I'm gonna use uh, to make the two belts. I cut my straps uh, when I lay it all out, I usually cut up a complete hide in a mix of straps so that I've got stuff to work with. The next thing I need to do is I cut the straps roughly to length. And I just add 10 inches to the uh, belt length, the finished belt length. So I'm gonna cut the strap. This is, I'm gonna start with the Western here. And the Western is a 40 inch belt, so I need a 50 inch strap to start with. So I will measure off, I'll probably cut it at about 52 just to get it down to a manageable length and then I can, I can work from there. I'm looking for things like this. Uh, that's the scarring from the brand on the animal. There's some scratches or crease marks. I'm looking for, make sure I've got a good 50 inch strip here to make this belt from. These are my two pieces for the Western. I'll set these aside for a moment. And then this is the Cindy belt. And like I said, you've not seen one of these yet. They're uh, kind of unique. This one's got a few marks on it and I use those for the lining on the back of the belt. It's got a few uh, creases or funny places in it here that won't really detract. It definitely won't take away from the strength. Um, and then this is the front, which is cleanest. And so it's a 33 inch belt. So add 10 to that. I need a 43 inch uh, strap. I'm gonna add a little bit to this just to give me a little bit of room to work with here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cut it at, uh, let's say 46 inches. Then I need to thin down the uh, bend over part of this belt because that's kind of thick here, especially on this part. And the way I do that, normally when I'm figuring out the bend over on the belt, I'll I will go from the butt of the animal because that's where the hide is the strongest. The back, the top of the back, 
towards the tail is going to be the strongest. That's where I want my bend over part to be. And I figure out which end that is. And then the next thing I do is my bend over is going to be three and a half inches. Now, I don't have the end cut of this, this one here. So I'm going to measure in four inches because that'll be where the bend is. And I'm going to mark four inches on the back. And then I'm going to skive off some of that. And then I went four and a half inches here. That will allow me to skive this. And I'm going to use my splitter, and it'll be staggered. You'll see what I mean here in just a moment. So now you'll see I've skived or split from here down on this one and from here down on that one. When these are put together as layers, I will have kind of a step down. So here's the full thickness, and then here's a half inch of just one of them skived down. Then here's the, the finish, and then the bend over will be like this. So I just took some of the meat out of this back in here. I may even step down one more time once I identify the uh, bend over part here. So I'm hoping that makes sense. But I'm gonna laminate this one together, and then I'm going to get the defined edge. This belt has got a sculpted edge on it. And I do that after I have the two laminated together. Once I get it to that point, I will dye it. And you'll see the reason why here shortly. Okay, I've set up here. I've got cardboard down. It helps me uh, keep my countertop clean. Once I'm done with the contact adhesive, I take the cardboard out of the way and I don't have any residue on the countertop. And uh, I apply contact adhesive in two applications on both belt strips and uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go down through here put this on I let it tack up I come back through put another application on and then once that's tacked up on both of them then I'll laminate them together so I'm not gonna bore you watching me brush on contact adhesive on all this I will come back once I'm ready to laminate these two pieces together okay so these two straps have had a chance to tack up. The contact adhesive is sticky, but it's not wet. This is the bend over part. So I'm gonna start there and just double check myself here. Make sure I don't lose track of which one's the top. Yeah, so this is the uh, top and this is the liner. So to laminate these together, I start at the bend over and I put a little bit of a bend in the belt so that I'm not creating so many wrinkles where the two come together. I think it'll make sense here in just a moment. So I will line up these two. These are cut to the same width and I'm gonna put a bend here before I continue on. And that's where the buckle is going to attach. And it helps get some of that tension out of the leather there. And I'm just lining up these two edges here and working my way down the belt. All right. So these two are laminated together. And then I am going to uh, run my hammer down the center and kind of tack it together. It's stuck pretty well, but once I do this, it'll really be stuck. And then I'm going to take my glass slicker burnisher and push these two layers together, kind of tipping one side to the other down the belt to make sure that they're well bonded together. Now that I have these two layers together, I'm gonna to go ahead and trim this end piece with the, uh, a round over. Partially just help me keep track of where I'm at on which end of the belt's width. I put a piece of leather under here because the texture of this board 
could leave marks on the leather and it is going to be the bend over part so no one's going to see it but i'm going to know it's there and if i know it's there it's still not right this belt will actually be an inch wide on this end when i finish so this is more than anything just help me keep track of which ends which I'm going to measure in three and a half inches and put a mark signifying the center of that bend over. And then I'm going to bend the leather so that mark is at the apex. So this is going to be the bent part of the belt where the buckle goes. I go through that trouble because the next thing I'm going to do, this pattern, I want to be centered on this uh, belt. So I need to be able to establish this end, the finished end, to be able to measure and find the center of the belt. Now, when I say the center of the belt, I'm not talking about the total length. I'm talking about the center of where it'll be the center of the back of the person wearing the belt. And this belt is a belt that's made 33 inches long. And so what I'm going to do is divide that in half. So half of 33 would be 16 and a half. So that's 16 and a half from the bend over. So I'm going to hook here and measure in 16 and a half inches. And this will be just a light pencil mark here. This is going to be the center of my design. So to make this belt, I want... This belt's gonna have lobes like this on it. I need to get one of these made that are the same from one end to the other. This is for a breast collar on, on horse tack. And I like this shape because it helped me to uh, create that without like freestyling it in. And the, this belt being uh, 33 inches, um, and there'll be holes starting here. There'll be a hole at 32 and a hole at 31. And then there'll be a hole at 34 and 35 to allow some adjustment. Uh, and so what I'm, I want to do is I want to create these lobes and I'm going to spread them apart. You'll see what I mean here in just a second. So the center's uh, 16. Uh, if I have... Uh, six of these lobes around the belt and i want to end up not encroaching on my finished hole here uh, i'm probably going to finish up somewhere around i'm going to say 28 inches so that's five inches in and then five inches in uh, so that gives me a distance of 23 inches um, you know, from start to finish of the taper, and the taper will, will come in just like it is on here on the last one. It'll run like this. So, I'm not sure if I'm making sense here, but it'll make sense once I get it drawn on here. So I'm gonna come in five inches, and that's gonna be where the taper starts or finishes into one inch. So then if I lay this on here, maybe there's an easier way, but every belt comes out custom according to the size of the belt needed for that person. So I'm gonna start here and I line myself up on the, the belt strip pencil here with uh, a softer lead so it's easier to mark. So I'm going to start here at this where this lobe's at and I'm going to come here and here and draw in where this is going to go. So then you end up with the lobe here for the belt. So uh, I'm an inch wide here after the lobe. The lobe is an inch and a half, so it's a quarter inch off the edge here. 
So this is the first lobe from the buckle and it's five inches in. So then what I'm gonna do on the other end is I'm gonna do the same thing. So it's um, 33 inches. here and five inches so that would be um, 28 so 28 is going to be where this last lobe ends is going to be here so then I will mark that in I think I'm going to do five lobes instead of six it's really a lot dependent on the distance between um, dependent on the length of the belt Okay, so I'm here is the center, and here is the center. Maybe it'll be a little easier to see if I put a, a light mark where that's going to be in the center of it. There'll be a concho attached here when I'm done, so you won't see my, my little imprint there. Okay, so that's the center of the first and the center of the last here. So then I can measure between those. Uh, burn 10 inches here, easier to line up. So I'm at uh, 21 and a quarter inches. So then the center between those two marks, 21 and a quarter, is going to be 10, 10 and an eighth, 20 and an eighth. So this will be the center then between um, those two conchos. And so I will line this up on that hole or that mark. And then I will draw in this same lobe here on both sides. I'll double check my my math to make sure that I'm right and I am so now I have a ten and an eighth between that half of that's five and a sixteenth so then I will go five and a sixteenth from that spot five and a sixteenth there and five and a sixteenth here I will line up my lobe on that spot as well. And I will draw that one in. And then I'll do the same on the other end. All right, they're probably hard to see, but I have each of my five lobes made on there. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a straight edge and I'm gonna connect the dots or the flat parts between those. Once I've got that done, I'm going to then go ahead and extend this strip that's now one inch wide down the length of this so I can trim that off. I'll just draw it in here.
Okay, probably hard to see. I've identified where the one inch strip's gonna be here, each of the lobes, one, two, three, four, and five. I'll double check, make sure I've got them in the right places because I can always adjust a little bit now. Yeah, I'm looking good here. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna trim and cut this, this shape out. I'm gonna go ahead and start off with a fresh blade here to make these cuts. And I'm not gonna worry about trying to cut all the way through 12 ounces of leather on this first time through here. I'm gonna score whatever is comfortable that I feel like I can control the knife. If it happens to be all the way through, that'd be awesome. If not, I'll come back and uh, trace over it again and, and get that fixed. I'll move in a little bit closer here. I don't know if you can see or not. Of course, now I can't because I have the camera in my way. But I'm going to then pick out one of these I can see without being directly over it. You see the line is right here. So I'm just going to start my cut here. And if anything on these lobes, I'll stay outside of the line and I'll sand down to it. It's not a guarantee the knife follows the previous cut, but it does a pretty good job of following it here. It's kind of a tedious belt to make. Okay, yep, that's easy. So I'm gonna work my way on down the belt doing the exact same thing. Okay, so I've got the lobes, I'm gonna call them roughly cut in because they, they have square shoulders on them here. It's easier to sand that in than it is to cut on that curved line there. I've made uh, half a dozen of these belts and that's the easiest way I've found to do it. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use, uh, I'm, well, I'm gonna hand sand. I'm gonna sand these lobes in, get them defined. I got a couple places where there's like a little wiggle here in the cut line. I'm gonna get that all cleaned up. And then I'm gonna go ahead and um, uh, cut the belt to length. I've still got roughed in here. And then I'm gonna run this through the die. That'll be, that's my next steps on this belt. In the meantime, I'm going to lay out. I'm going to lay out the pattern for the western belt on here, and the reason why I'm going to do that is on the western belt. You've probably seen that before, but I dye the belt, uh, the top strap, after I get the holes in it before I laminate the back on. It'll make more sense as I go here, but I need to kind of do a similar thing of establish the bend over on here, find the center of the belt. This is a uh, 40 inch belt and I need to find the center of the belt and then uh, lay out my pattern from there. And then I need to also thin down the uh, fold over on this and I'm just making sure, you know, if I had a scar in the first five or six inches, I'd rather it be on the bend over instead of the tip area. It's a pretty clean uh, strip of leather. Uh, this is the butt end, that's gonna be the strongest. So I'll go ahead and I'll make the bend over here. So I'm gonna go ahead and thin down the, the last uh, three and a half inches on this belt. All right, so then I'll go ahead and I'll measure in my three and a half inches. <clears throat> I'm gonna make it an extra quarter because I'm gonna I'm going to be trimming off this square end here. So I'm just going to say three quarters. I'll bend this over here where that's at. And I'm going to lay out my pattern for this belt. This is a uh, 
a 40 inch belt. So the center obviously is easier math, it's 20. So I'll come to 20 and I'm gonna put my pencil mark at 20. And this is gonna be, denote the center of this, this belt. The Western belt's got two lines of stitching down the center with stitching along both edges. And the stitching in the center, the reason why I do it as one layer is I don't want all of the stops and starts to show on the inside of the belt. So what I'll do is I'll stitch between, it's got three inches of stitching, a half inch gap, three inches of stitching, half inch gap. I'm gonna make it so that the stitching uh, thread goes through the inside, so the back side of the top layer to the next section and continues on. So to do that, each uh, section of stitching is three inches long. And just to make it simple, there's six tines here. So what I will do is I'll line up here, straddle this center point, put holes in here, another set here, another set there, skip a half inch and work my way down. So I'm gonna use my wing divider. And this is an inch and a half belt. So to keep proportions right, I, I put the stitching line just a little further apart than I do on an inch and a quarter belt. And uh, so then uh, the first thing I need to do is to find and lay out my stitching pattern. So this is the center. That's gonna be the center of three inches so it's going to be from this here, the six, there's the center, inch and a half to nine. I'll mark another half inch down the line. So that's nine and a half, so it'd be 12 and a half, 13, 16. You get the idea. I will figure out where I want my to spread all my stitches in the center. I don't have a particular uh, math formula that I use. I figure out what's gonna look good, the distance between the stitches. I work with a guy some in the summer building homes. And he said, it's fine to measure, but also just look at it. If it looks right, it's probably right. If it looks wrong, well, it's probably wrong. So now I'm gonna just put short little, not too heavy, the stitching will hide that. Uh, and I'll work my way down this belt. Putting these little creases with my wing divider. Okay, so that gives me the layout. I don't know if you can see that. I get an angle on it here, but there's a little crease here and a little crease here. Next, I'm going to create my uh, stitching holes. This is the center pattern. It's got the center mark for the whole belt, and I'm gonna line up on here on that pattern splitting that those center tines. If there's much of a variation between these two lines, it'll really stand out. Get my half inch. And work my way down the belt. All right, so next on the Western, I will uh, do the other side here. And I want my stitches stitching pattern lined up from side to side 
so that they're not staggered where they start and stop or any of that. So I'll just take this little speed square here, butt it up, put the uh, stitch on the, the stitch, put the stitching iron in the first set of holes and then bump up against it over here, line up on my groove, uh, move this out of the way here and create the holes. The challenge is I have to do that every time I cross a half inch gap. I guess I could eyeball it. I did on the first one. I think it looked fine. Uh, I should probably call this the Terry belt instead of the Western, but I like the Western flair of it. Why would I call it the Terry? That's the first person I made one of these belts for. Yep, it's you, Terry. And I'm just going to keep repeating this till I get to the other end. So no sense in boring you with that. When I get to the other end, I'll show you the next step. Okay, so I've got the holes in here to create the uh, Western belt. The next thing I'm gonna do is actually gonna be to dye this strap of leather and I do that because it gives a kind of an aged look the dye will take quicker around these holes and along the edge and it'll give kind of a faded look um, some might think it looks a little blotchy but it's in my opinion kind of a cool look especially in this color so I'll set up the dye station over here and then do that All right, now that I have the sanding done, the next thing I need to do is to put in my stitch line on here. And uh, so the way I do that is I'm going to use the Groover edging tool, but I'm going to use the creaser in it. And I'm going to put a line around the outside to follow with my stitching chisels. I wait till I get all this rounded because obviously that will affect the shape of the stitch line as well.
All right, so I've established my stitch line here. I've got the, uh, the crease there that I'll follow. And I always start at the point and I always work on the away side of the belt from me. Now I'm gonna use the uh, five millimeter stitching chisels. I bought these from Weaver. I've made over 200 belts using these. They've been a good quality tool for me. Uh, they're slicked up a lot more polished up than they were when I started. And I don't find them that difficult to, uh, you know, remove from the strap once I get them in there. I always start with a single at the top. I go through into another piece of leather instead of just this because when you're pulling this out, you tend to want to like tip and it puts a lot of pressure here where if that leather's there, it flexes with it. At least that's uh, my story and I'm sticking with it. I'm just going to work my way from one end to the other. I tip the uh, top of the chisel out slightly so that there's no way that my stitches are going to come out more that direction. When I get to the uh, lobe here, I'll have to switch to the two tine so I can follow the curvature of the lobe. All right, now I've finished making all the stitching holes along here. I'm gonna go ahead and put a quick coat of resiline on the front and back of this. It looks a little bit uh, out of shape because of this lip here. I'm gonna trim that off, but I, 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 on this belt, I like how it looks better if I save that for one of the last steps. So I'm gonna put resiline on here and then this is the western belt uh, that I'm making as well. And I'm going to put resin on the front of this. It helps keep the leather grips on my stitching pony from getting really uh, a lot of rub off dye on it if I do it that way. Resiline is an acrylic. It's got a little bit of a sheen to it. Some people don't like that. I think it looks good, especially after you've worn it for a bit of time and some of that 
shininess wears off. You'll see what I'm talking about. Earlier I was talking about a two-tone effect to it. I don't know if you can see it very well there or not, but it's dark along the edges and dark where the stitches are. So here is the Cindy belt and so far I've obviously got it cut out, the holes punched for the stitching, uh, I've got it dyed and I've got a coat of resin on the top of it there. And the next thing I'm going to do is measure off three and a half times the length of the belt and uh, as you can see it's a, it's a uh, diamond chisel and I'm going to do the saddle stitch on this. First thing I need to do is equal up both sides of the thread. This is how I do the saddle stitch. Someone's probably going to say there's a better way to do it. But this is how I do it. All right, so I have uh, completed my sanding along the edges, and I also used my edging tool to do the edges. I did a little more sanding. Didn't like how some of these lobes looked, so I just need to go through here and touch up my edging. It is really a challenge to make these look balanced one side to the other when you're cutting them all by hand. A little bit of a challenge there. Once I get the conchos on there, I think your eye is more focused on the conchos. So it, if, if it is off slightly, then it's not nearly as big of an issue. I'm in pretty good shape there. So next I'm gonna grab some water and I'm going to burnish these edges and then I will touch up the die on the areas where I've sanded through the die that's on the edge. I use denim for most of my burnishing. The only time that I get away from that is if I'm doing a natural color uh, belt then I don't use denim because I have gotten a little bit of a even though these are old jeans a little bit of a blue cast to the edging process and I'm not anti tokenol but my belt edges look good when they're done so my process seems to work pretty well at least for me and my clients I just use water and friction not a lot of uh, 
not a lot of pressure. You're just generating some heat. And once I get the dye reapplied on the edge here where it needs it, I'll burnish it yet again. The dye tends to stiffen up those fibers and it slicks down really nice. Uh, and then I do a little bit of burnishing of the clear, the resiline that I use on the belts. And when I'm done, my belt edges are nice and slick. Next up, I'm going to laminate this to the uh, lining leather, and then I'll be doing stitching along the edges after I get it ready. Okay, so we're making some progress here. I've got uh, both the belts to this point here where I can now finish putting sealer on it. Uh, I use Resoline. I've got the edge burnished, so I'm going to put a coat of Resoline on this belt. Uh, after that, I need to put in my conchos and do the final assembly, and it's done. And this one here, I'm going with a natural back on it. And I've got uh, to put a coat of resoline on this and the front, and then I've got black spots that are going to go here. And then I've made both of my uh, loops here, keepers. And uh, I find it's easier to put the coat of resoline on these before I make them into a loop. So that's my next step is to put resoline here. Focus on getting it down into the stitch holes here, trying to keep from uh, having any chance of rub off of the dye on the clothes. I'll hang this to let it dry. All right, so the next thing I need to do is to put the conchos on this belt. And this concho has the mounting post off center. So about the only way I know to get that on there right is to place it and get it to where it looks as centered as possible. And then once you've done that, go ahead and just press down so that the um, post on the back of it makes a mark for me to go ahead and make the hole. Make sure that looks all right one more time. It's, uh, there's no undoing the, making the hole there. I've got a couple imprints, so what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna take my Sharpie, put a little bit of black on here. So I know for sure which one it is that looks best. Okay, there we have it.
And then I'll put a little bit of clear fingernail polish on these threads. You know, some of these, the uh, threads are not as clean as others. So I'm gonna run this screw in first. Yeah, it's pretty tight. Wouldn't work on something thin, that's for sure. But the, the hole with the threads is really pretty shallow. But it'll work for what I'm doing here. Okay. Just got to do that four more times. There we go. You want to make sure when you're making this belt that you have right side up because it would be easy enough to make it backwards and have them upside down. So next, I started my belt loop or keeper and uh, all I did was cut a strip put the stitching in here and then I'm going to sew this into a loop and I just sew a simple X pattern on the back here. And it's a pretty strong loop. I've had some that felt a little bit tight and I've put a piece of wood between it and wrenched around on it and it holds up to it. I finish it off with a square knot and then cut and melt the thread. All right, next, I need to uh, create the slot here for the buckle. I do that three and a half inches in. Three and a half inches. Then I'll use my wing dividers to create a line here for my chisel to follow or I should say my bag punch And then I need to make the holes for 
Chicago screws that I use. Quarter inch. I'll line up this groove so it's equal on both sides. Then I mark it center. Same thing here. <clears throat> I don't want to forget. Gotta put the loop on here because I won't be able to get it past these nubs here once I get the buckle on. My buckle from the buckle guy. A little more clear finger, no polish. You can use um, even just a little bit of like Elmer's glue would keep those threads from backing out. I have had a couple of these I tried to take out with the finger nail polish and they were unfriendly to get out. We're getting closer. Next are the holes. <clears throat> For the buckle. I make the uh, center hole should be the size that the person wears. And then I make holes every inch for adjustment. I either do five or seven typically. Some of it's a judgment call based on a conversation with the customer. The tongue on this buckle looks a little smaller. I'm going to do one size smaller and check it and see. Now I'm going to go with my regular quarter inch hole. Keeper. 
usually a little bit snug in the beginning and it wears in nicely. I think it came out pretty nice. Hopefully the uh, person receiving it likes it. And I've just about got the Western for her husband done. I've got the stitching all in, the black spots in. The last thing I have to do is go through the same process to mount the buckle, which is a stainless steel buckle on this one, and put the holes in. But you've already seen how it's done. I sure hope you enjoyed following along on this video making the Cindy belt along with a companion western uh, if you'd be so kind as to share this with someone else and to like it and if you're not a subscriber please subscribe and if you would check and make sure that you're still subscribed that'd be great i've had a few people say that they've been uh, kicked off the subscription list so anyway i hope you have a great day